Hey, what's up, everybody? It is Kellen here from Start Your Systems, and welcome back to MX Bikes, where today we are going to be playing the first round of the 2022 ARL, uh, which is the Aerial Racing League Esport MX Bikes Championship Series. And uh, yeah, Fox Raceway. And you may have noticed back there, as I'm rolling the wrong direction now, uh, Start Your Systems, we have our own little canopy in the pits here this year, so that's pretty cool. But hey, we have a racing team, so we should, right? Have a big semi. Uh, in the pits. So, yeah, this round was supposed to go last night on Thursday, which was uh, June 9th. But unfortunately, some things happened, which is kind of why I wanted to, I guess, make a video today, uh, talk about a couple things going on in the community, maybe let you guys in on some stuff. I don't know. Uh, tell you as much as I can. And, um, and then ride this track as well, because this is the first track of kind of the new era of MX bikes as well. Um, and I'm already going to be playing it terribly. Did like a bunch of laps beforehand just to try to get reasonably comfortable again with the track. Um, but uh, yeah, not feeling too good on it right now out of nowhere. Anyway, um, yeah, the first round was supposed to be last night. I was definitely going to race it like I uh, had mentioned in the video prior. Uh, I guess this was like last Friday now where I said that, you know, going to try to do some pro races in MX bikes this year. Uh, first time really giving it a go that way. I've been playing bikes since, you know, beta three or four and we're on 17 now. So I've been around for quite a while, but I'm just so off and on with it that I've never really retained uh, any sort of consistent skill set. Whereas like the top, top guys in the game have all gotten really good in that time frame. And um, yeah, so I'm definitely nowhere close to them, but I felt like I would like to give it a go. Um, you know, race pro and sim for a long time. So I felt like it was about time to at least see if I could try to qualify for some races in bikes, which I felt like probably wasn't going to happen last night. It's freaking 100 people signed up in 450 and 300 people signed up in 250 and only 30 people make the motos. So it's probably going to be a lost cause anyway, but at least try, show it off a little bit, have some fun, do some videos. But yeah, so yesterday was the first time in, I guess, pretty much the history of MX bikes that they have now gone more or less with a pay to play model. Uh, which was inevitable is going to happen. It happened in sim and people in the bikes community thinking it wasn't going to happen was just being maybe a, a, a bit lackadaisical about the whole situation. But uh, yeah, so they made this first round a uh, buck 50 to get the track, which I, I've heard a couple of things about. I think they're releasing it later on or something like that. But for the ability to race the series, you need to, to pay the, the dollar 50, which I think is like totally fine. Like you're supporting the creators, you're supporting the people that put the series on and stuff like that. Obviously the one big problem that ended up happening with it is so many people went to uh, the website that they released the track on at the exact same time that it crashed the website, uh, which was pretty much inevitable that like, not necessarily that the site was gonna crash, but that they would have as many people go to the site at one time as they did because of how many people were signed up. So, you know, they're just kind of, I guess, underprepared Stone Rider, Mook Labs, and, and those guys that put together the mxbikes-shop.com page. I think we're maybe just a little bit, um, I don't know, just kind of missed the mark on how many people they thought were coming or, or something like that. I don't, I don't really know, but and it ended up being that they needed a lot more server bandwidth and they're gonna try to get it fixed. And, and for now, at least, if you go to the site and try to buy the track, uh, now you can get it, but uh, I, I mean, even late last night, it was still pretty tough for me to finally get it downloaded, and it took me like probably four or five hours to get through. So it was a bit frustrating, obviously, for a lot of people because I think there was so much hype around going outdoors and the series and um, and all that, and and how many people were signed up to have it end up being a bit of a farce. And, and EU was initially canceled because they released the track like 30 minutes before the EU race or qualifying session start. And then there's about a four hour or five hour window where you can play the track before the North America championship starts at uh, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. And uh, yeah, it just kind of all fell apart <laughs> right away. So it took a little while and you know, like credit to them, they're responding well and trying to do their best to fix it and stuff like that. But like I said, the one bad look of it is like the, the first time that they try to go with this model, it goes that badly, which is not a good look at all because then it kind of makes it look, I don't know, just janky, I guess, for the, the way that you've set it up. So it happens though, um, totally get it and it's understandable. But unfortunately for me, what that means is I will not be able to race this first round now because while it was supposed to be a weekday race, a, a Thursday night race, uh, it's now moved right back to the normal time that they've been doing the aerial races the entire time, which is Friday. And uh, Fridays are 
already pretty much impossible for me to make anyway, um, but today is extra impossible because I will not even be in town by the time the races go off. So um, it's kind of a usual situation because I travel a lot for um, a real job, I guess, and uh, end up not being around too much on Friday nights to be able to try. And uh, yeah, just the way that the cookie crumbles sometimes. So kind of bummed because I was looking forward to at least trying again. Um, now I'm going to have to wait you know, maybe at least until next week or, or whenever I get a chance again to try to give it a go my first time, but excited for the season to start for our MX Bikes Racing team, the SYS Racing MX Bikes team uh, getting going. Uh, Ev Move just coming off of the 250 Supercross title is going to jump up and, r and ride 450s, and he actually wasn't even going to be able to race last night, so now uh, moving to Friday, it's going to be better for him, but I think he's supposed to be able to race moving forward every Thursday after that. Um, and then we got Hemi and Morin and, and Merck is on the team now. And um, yeah, just a, a good group of guys. I was looking forward to kind of, you know, learning about the whole process with them. Cause like I said, I've never even tried to race pro. So I didn't even know like how the whole system flowed or anything. I've watched the streams a lot, but I don't always get to see exactly the behind the scenes of it. So a little bit bummed, like I said, but you know, looking forward to trying again at another time and, and seeing if I can't at least get close to getting inside the top 25 spots um, and then eventually maybe qualifying out of the LCQ or maybe I just go straight in through the motos. I don't know, but long story short, not going to be this week and we'll have to pick another week to try to give it a go. But um, yeah, so kind of wanted to give that little community update, kind of explain a couple things with that. And then more or less like, I guess just ride this track to get a little bit of use out of it and talk about uh, you know, the feel of this track, what I think of it compared to the real Fox Raceway, because as I've said many times before, I live pretty close to it. So it's one of the few tracks on the schedule uh, that I feel like I can very accurately say if it's, you know, close or not. Uh, this one I feel like is, is pretty much not, uh, not to be like kind of mean to them, but they definitely are, uh, you know, pretty much underscaling a lot of stuff. And on top of that, they've also uh, not really got the layout correct either but you know i think for what they they can do uh stone rider and mook are both from europe so they're they're not quite as ingrained to what you know u.s tracks are supposed to look like and on the ground and getting first-hand response but um yeah it's 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 a little bit off that being said it's still a pretty good track it's a fun track to ride uh it's pretty difficult for someone with my skill set because it's really you know choppy uh, the ruts are not very flowy. Like you really have to angle into the corners in very specific ways to kind of find the entry points of the ruts. And then once you hook, uh, they even kind of go away halfway through the corners in some regards and stuff like that. And I get why they're trying to do that to make it a little bit more realistic to kind of hopping in and out of ruts or, or laying in and, and, and popping up out of a rut or something like that. But for my sake, it's just terrible. Like I just am not very comfortable with that kind of skill set yet more comfortable with the long flowy ruts so you're going to see me taking a lot of lines that if you watched like connor Lindsay's video or anybody else's video of them playing this track yet probably not taking the same lines i am just because i'm trying to find the, the lines that i'm actually comfortable in and not necessarily the lines that are the fastest around the track um, but we're getting there we're trying to make some progress i feel like slowly but surely i, I learned this track uh pretty well a little bit last night and uh was able to put down a 210 which is well off the pace that Linz is putting down, like I said, but I'm not even trying to think about that. I'm just trying to think about, you know, getting a second better here, a second better there until I'm, you know, hovering down in the low twos or something like that, perhaps, and uh, see if we start feeling a little bit better moving forward. I'm not claiming to be the best at all in bikes, just trying to get my feet wet, learn the ropes, and figure out if I'm even going to be close. But this laps are looking pretty good so far. I made a couple little mistakes, but I think I can still if i can finish it off here at the end maybe put it down into the teens low two teens somewhere because we're creeping up past the two minute mark and we've got a few corners left to go here table right here and then i personally like jumping to the outside line right here because you get a little bit better drive into the step up and then get this triple pretty clean as well and hey it was at a 209 so that might have been my best lap actually what do we do yeah 20984 so creeping down just like that while doing a video and talking about it or uh, learning the ropes a little bit. Um, but anyway, you may have noticed as well that I'm riding a 450 and kind of, I, I don't know, I'm not really stoked on the idea of, of racing a 450, but 
as you may have heard me say, there's way more signups in the 250 class. So really the only class that I could even try to make it into and, and possibly race is the 450 class. But the 450s in this game are honestly are not that good. Um, you, you don't, it's a pretty big learning curve already with the game, but then the 450s have like an extra learning curve to it because uh, they just don't have really that good of rear wheel traction. So you have to figure out that aspect of it. It's always a little bit difficult for me because I like riding the bike in higher revs, which is more of a 250 thing. And on the 450 in this game, you definitely have to kind of lug it a little bit more through the corners uh, just to keep that kind of momentum and that power at a good stage and not lose the rear end traction. So that part of it's a little bit difficult for me to learn as well. But I feel like we're kind of picking it up and finding some, some good grooves with the 450, good vibes. I'm already up a little bit here because that's where I made that stake last time by. So we might be on our on our way to yet another good lap as I just kind of hop all the way down to the bottom of the hill right there. Not the cleanest corner, but we'll still jump up to the top and try to hook this inside rut pretty clean. Got that nice and good through there. I feel like once I get through the hills, the rest of the track I'm usually pretty good at. There's a couple turns right there at the end that I, I definitely have flubbed it a few times. But Oh, and right there, of course, as soon as I say it, that inside rut that has not got me this entire time finally does. So we're working there. We're, we're trying getting lower into the two oh somethings. And uh, yeah, like I said, qualifying times tonight are definitely going to be mid to low 50s, probably 155, 154 will be probably like a top 10 time would be my guess, or maybe even maybe even farther down than that. So many people in this game have gotten really good over the years. Um, when I picked up the game, there was literally a handful of people that were quite fast at the game, and uh, you kind of knew who they were and, and, and knew how fast they were. Like, for example, Ruben, who really doesn't, he's around, but he's not around that much anymore. Uh, he was blazing fast when I first picked up the game, and it's gone through a whole different change and iteration of fast people, and now there's, there's people uh, that pretty much were like teenager or not even teenagers when I picked up the game and now they're almost adults so like it's it's been a while and uh, definitely gone through a lot of changes and iterations but uh just trying to get my feet wet established a little bit trying to learn this track feel it out a little bit feel out what lines I like and where I'm comfortable and where I'm not comfortable and also just trying to get into that zone the thing about these games and the thing that I always learned about sim is like as soon as you do like one good lap if you can connect the next lap after it and the next lap after it, you'll slowly start going faster without even realizing. It's like just literally just do laps. Uh, stop trying to focus on hitting things harder or whatever. Just like work to your speed and your ability and, and feel how the bike moves underneath you and uh, where you can maybe go a little bit faster here and there. But don't don't push it. Like there's no point in uh, trying to go faster than what your skill set is in the game because you're just never going to learn how to go fast. Then you like have to kind of learn how to go slow first, I guess. And that's definitely the same thing with this game that I'm learning uh, as I get a little bit better with it is you just have to kind of let things happen, let it f the flow kind of come to you and not force it. Otherwise, you're just never going to be going fast in the game. So, yep, we're getting there. We're getting there and maybe give it a go at uh, Hangtown or round two next week. But Fox Raceway tonight. Uh, for those of you that have been asking, I don't stream the series, never have, and... It might be a little while before I do, but uh, you can definitely check out the ARL Discord um, or head over to mymxb.com and there's some information of, of how to get connected to the series there. And there's also links in those disc in that Discord and I believe also on the website of uh, like how to watch the races. I know TKO Smokey does some of the streaming and then um, Legin Commentator, uh, I think it's Ginxma or Jinxma or whatever you call him. Uh, does some of the commentating as well and then dad shoes which is I don't know if he wants his real name out there but he does some commentating as well so it, it's a it's a couple of different people it's not me though and uh, yeah you can definitely watch the races if you would like to by watching them or just keep up with the results and I'll try to every week maybe make another video talk about who's leading the series and, and who did what and how our team's doing and how I'm doing if I've tried and so on and so forth and you guys can kind of keep along this is now, I guess, officially the, the MX Bikes Professional Progression Series because I used to do an MX Bikes Progression Series where I was just learning the game. Now I'm trying to learn how to go fast in the game, and this is a whole different beast, I'll tell you that much. Oh, we're going to go a little bit long on that table, kind of swap a little bit, but we're good. Try to finish up this lap, see if it's a good one, but right now it is a 
looking a little bit rough around the edges. It's all right, we're still a half second up, so maybe we're slowly working towards a pretty good lap here. So we'll carry speed through this corner, get that double, get on the gas, try to get through these rollers clean. Not the fastest I've ever gotten through them, but this feels like the bike isn't planting right now. I don't know if maybe uh, the tire wear is catching up to me a little bit and I'm just not really getting through the corners as I was before. We're gonna get down this hill really good and that'll put us back well ahead of our time. So let's see if we can finish this off, maybe dip down into the 208s. That's not a very good corner right there. We're gonna case coming up the hill, but I think it'll help us get to the inside a little bit better. So I've got that pretty clean. A lot of just like tiptoeing through the corners on this track. I feel like you just, it's not a very wide open fast track, which is very much not what the real Fox Raceway is. Fox Raceway in real life is really wide open and fast. But in this game, for whatever reason, it's just so much tighter. Um, so you really have to mind your corner speed and, and not kind of like force the issue, I guess. Go off the track, take a little bit of creative liberties right there. But we're, uh, we're trending well. Let's see if we can get this last corner well here. Pretty good down the back side of this. I think we're just gonna miss the 208s by a nose. I think what would we do, a 209.17. So a couple 209s, but lowered the lap time in the progress of making this video. So I'm happy about that. And yeah, that's a little bit of an MX Bikes update slash Fox Raceway uh, shred tour, I guess, here today on your Friday. Um, shout out to my team, the folks at uh, the SYS Racing MX Bikes team. Good luck to them tonight, everybody that's racing. Uh, Blue Tech Suspension and Market MXB for coming on board this year with us. Uh, Prospect Designs and R Jerky as well, who have been behind us since pretty much the beginning of the team. And we're excited to see how the boys in blue this year do tonight as we kick off the season. So thanks guys for tuning in. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. As always, be sure to get involved in the comment section below if you have any more things that you'd like to ask or uh, that you're curious about. Happy to answer those questions, but uh, I'm gonna send you guys on your way today. Hopefully you have a great day wherever you are, but I'm sending you off now and I'll see you guys in the next one. So long for now.